Okay, and number one on the list of things to know before you leave the United States for South Africa is understanding your visa process. And I'm, again, I say understanding your visa process because everybody's is different. There were seven of us that left the U.S. and came here, five of which were children. Um, and it was completely different between us. So I applied for a critical skills visa. My five children, including the preschooler, had to file for study visas. My husband could have filed for a study visa as well, but he just recently finished school and wasn't looking to dive right into courses here right off the bat. So he just came on an accompaniment visa. He could have chosen to do a general work permit, but as I discussed in the international travel video briefly, that seems to be a little cumbersome, at least at first glance, because it's really frowned upon from the government of South Africa to give out jobs to foreigners when there are people that are qualified within the country to take that job. A critical skills visa, though, is or exceptional skills visa is a qualification that a list is populated at least every couple of years. It can change here or there. I don't think it's changed in the last year and a half, but it has a list of skills and different sectors that fall under that particular skill set that they're looking for and in, in countrywide, they're having trouble filling those particular types of jobs. So in my case, I have my master's in business administration and for managers and corporate liaisons and business advisors, those types of jobs are not as easy to fill for candidates. So they do allow you to come over at least as of October of last year, 2020 until now, um, 2021. That list may change at any time. So you want to make sure that you are checking that list regularly throughout your process. Make sure that the Department of Home Affairs site becomes your friend. Look at each one of those lists. See what state you're in in the U.S. and which office you need to coincide your application with. I know in Maryland, in D.C., Virginia, I think all of those offices were to file through D.C., whereas in Arizona, you had to file through Los Angeles. Let me make myself clear. This process, while it's not very cumbersome, it is incredibly tedious, meaning it's not a lot of paperwork you need to get, but syncing everything is quite daunting. Make sure you give yourself enough time. I don't think I started this until September, October, and I just really made the cutoff for our December the 8th flight date, okay? So make sure you give yourself enough time. When you have to do your background checks, you can pretty much go and do them in the United States Postal Service. There is a service that you can use that allows you to do it pretty much online. It saves you the headache. It's worth the extra money. I'll be sure to put that link again. I think I included that link in the previous video when I was talking about the critical skills visa. But most certainly, I'll be sure to update this link with that. It's so much information about the critical skills visa and the different types of visas that you can have to include relationship visas, relative visas, all of those sorts of things. But of course, each of those situations has their own caveats. And even there's one if you're going to venture into business here and you can come on a visa for that as well. If you have questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to get back with you as quickly as I can with as much information as I can.